Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Lauro Miller and I make videos about programming. Today we'll start discussing functions. We'll start by talking about ordinary functions and then we we'll talk about specialized functions, what they are, what are the concepts behind them, the differences, and then we finish with arrow functions. Actually, arrow functions are one type of specialized functions. There are other two, the methods and the classes, but we will talk about methods when we cover objects and we'll talk about the class functions when we cover classes. Awesome, so let's switch notion and let's get started. Ordinary and specialized functions. We will start the discussion by talking about the roles of functions in JavaScript. We'll then move on to discussing the specifics of ordinary functions, then the specifics of specialized functions and we will discuss arrow functions in more details. The discussion of methods and of classes we will do when we talk about objects and classes respectively. Respectively. New file here, I'm gonna call this roles.js. And really the three roles of a function, and perhaps it's gonna be a little bit more theoretical discussion, but the three roles of functions that we have in JavaScript, the first one is to be a real function. And that's just when we call the function, whatever, add something like this, add one and two, right? This is just when we call the function uh, by itself. So the traditional use of a function, the traditional definition. The second one is to be a method of an object where we actually have, let's say, calculator.add, for example, and then we can either pass the parameters or store the parameters somewhere else. But here we'll say, let's say, one and two. But here the function is actually a method. It's not a, a vanilla, an ordinary, or actually just a real function as it is based on this definition. And then the third role that, that functions can play is that they can be constructor functions. And the constructor functions, they are those functions that are called with the new keyword, new calculator, for example, like this, right? So here we're gonna call the new calculator and this is gonna create a new instance of this calculator object. And then this calculator object is going to be stored or this instance is going to be stored here in this calculator variable. Now that we are more familiar with the roles of functions, let's talk about ordinary functions. And basically what an ordinary function is, I'm gonna write this ordinary.js, is the traditional function, like so. Function, and I'm gonna call this a, uh, sorry, add a and b. And I'm gonna say console.log a plus b, like so, okay? and this is basically an ordinary function. It is when we create a function with this add, or sorry, when we create a function with this function keyword. I can also create something like this, subtract is equal to function, and then we'll say a and b, and we will simply console.log a minus b, right? So now I can call this as an ordinary or as a real function, add one and two. I can also call this subtract one and two, and if I save this and I come back here to the console and I run node ordinary.js, I'm gonna have three and minus one. Now I can also have these functions playing roles as methods of an object, right? So const calculator is going to be equal to, or let's call this, okay, calculator is good. And then we're gonna have add and subtract, right? So now I can actually call these functions. I can call the calculator.add with two and three, for example. And I can also call calculator.subtract with two and three. And if I save this and run in the console, then we're gonna get the five and the minus one. The last role that ordinary functions can play is actually the role of a constructor function. So if I say const add instance is equal to new add, for example, like this, I can then console.log add instance, instance of add like so, right? So if I save this and then I run again, I will get, oops, sorry, here I need to actually pass the parameters. Once I save this and then I run, I get true here in the end, right? And actually here I also got true, but I got the NAN here because I didn't pass the parameters, so <laughs> better, uh, better to pass the parameters, yeah. But in any case, the ordinary function can play any of these three roles. Now, there are some issues behind the scenes or there are some issues when we start taking these ordinary functions and using them everywhere. And we need to be a little bit more careful, for example, with which 
exact meaning the this keyword is going to have when we are using as a method or for example in in in, in constructor classes that there may be also some issues that we need to keep in mind and because of that javascript introduced recently what we call uh, specialized functions and then specialized functions they are really tailored to one specific purpose so let's come here back to Notion. I'm going to mark the ordinary functions as completed and let's discuss specialized functions. So the first specialized function is the arrow function. And the arrow function has the goal and the sole goal or the purpose of being a real function. Now, when I talk about um, goal or purpose or, or difference between ordinary and specialized functions and when to use each, this is really a decision that we need to understand at at the at the code level. It's not going to be it's not going to be the case that JavaScript is going to blow up the whole code if we use a specialized function in a different context. Okay, it's something that we as developers need to understand that there are advantages of using these specialized functions over using the ordinary function everywhere. And this is something that was introduced to solve some very specific issues of of the language. So I will try from, from now on to use the specialized functions whenever possible within the correct context. So the first one is the real function or the arrow function, which has the purpose of being just a real function, right? So here, if I say const arrow or const add, for example, I'm going to say a and b, and then the a and b, I'm going to console.log a plus b. And then here I will simply say add one and two, right? So this is totally fine. It's the way we would normally deal with functions or call functions and, and create functions in JavaScript. Now, the second one is the method. And the method is really very similar to the function, but let's say here we have a person, we have a first name, first name, and that's going to be John. We have a last name and the last name is going to be Doe. And then we have get full name, right? So get full name. Oops, not get full year, but get full name. And this is going to return or console.log this first name plus an empty space. And I know here I could use interpolation, but I'm a little bit lazy to look for that in the keyboard. So this dot first name plus this dot last name. And then I can simply say person dot get full name, right? If I were to save this, now let's come here to the console and let's run node specialized dot JS. And I will see three and John Doe. Now, one interesting thing we can try to do is to actually try to use this add arrow function here as a method inside of the person object. So if I were to, let's say, just for the sake of demonstration purposes, let's console log the this in this both methods. Once I save this and I run with node specialized.js, then you will see that here for the first one, it outputs an empty object. And for the second one, it outputs the object with first name, last name, and the get full name. So the, this keyword here is actually pointing to the object itself. And the, this keyword here is really pointing virtually nowhere or actually to the, maybe to the this on the outer scope could be the global this, but there is no guarantee because this will, this, this may vary. The whole point is that arrow functions do not have their own inherent definition of this, right? If I were to actually have here function subtract for example or just i'm just gonna call this function f and console.log console.log this and then i will call f and once i call f you will see that it has a very different this than the function add has right so as you can see the definition the actual handling of the keyword this is different in arrow functions and this is one of the purposes or one of the advantages of using this as a real function now uh, just allows us to actually work with cleaner code and we don't need to be worried about which exact meaning that this keyword is going to have because that this keyword is going to acquire the meaning from the outer scope now if i were to actually and try to use the add function here and I'm going to save this and then I'm going to run person dot add right like so one and two for example and I will are actually two different numbers here let's put three and four just for us to be able to differentiate and then I run here you will see that the this is still actually printing an empty object so it's not printing 
the this of the object itself and that's because the function declaration is outside of the object. If I were to actually create an add method and then within the add method I declare my function add and then I say here let's say a and b and oops sorry a and b and then here I will simply call add a and b uh, a and b like so right and here maybe for the sake of um, making it easier to differentiate let's do it like this add inner and then here this add I can get rid of once I save this and then I run the code now you will see that my arrow function actually has acquired so that this keyword of the arrow function is actually acquiring the meaning of the this keyword of the object okay now regarding methods and and this whole discussion we're going to talk about this later when we talk about objects I just wanted to show you that these specialized functions they are not so easily interchangeable now the third one is the class right so the class here is really I think you should already be familiar with this because I think we discussed this quite a few times and we have something of this syntax now I can say simply const calculator is going to be equal to new calculator and once I call new calculator then I can just call sort of log calculator instance of calculator like so if I save this and I run the code you see here at the bottom that I get true let's mark specialized functions as completed and let's move to a brief discussion about the arrow functions I think we actually covered pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about when I talked about specialized maybe I need to divide the video a little bit better um, but I mean this whole topic here it's kind of um, it's it's very fluid there are no clear boundaries that I can split things up if I talk about one thing I need to actually talk about everything else so just as a quick summary about arrow functions and here I'm going to use an object again so let's say calculator or person just to stick to tradition first name Jane last name though and then here we create a method so whatever right let's call this a method whatever um, and this here we're going to uh, we're going to define two functions so the first one is going to be the arrow function and then we're going to console console log this right within the arrow function and then we have another one function ordinary and then we'll also console console log this like so and then I'm going to call both of them I'm gonna call arrow and I'm going to call ordinary and then here at the bottom I'll simply call person dot whatever right like so back in the console let's clear the whole thing and run node arrow.js and then once I run this arrow.js you can see that actually the first one which is the arrow function it has correctly acquired the meaning of the this keyword of the object and the ordinary function it is still with its own um, this definition and this is because the the functions the ordinary functions they have their own definition of this now if I were to do something a little bit different if I were to simply say ordinary dot call and then within here I say this and I save this then I actually have a lot of this 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 but I'm sorry uh, then here I have the correct definition of the this keyword and this is because once I pass uh, the first parameter here is going to be the 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 meaning or the value for the this keyword within the function for to change this to one for example then it's gonna have number one right so I can change as I wish the value of the this keyword in ordinary functions but in arrow functions I don't really need to do that because the functions themselves they will acquire the meaning so that's called the uh, lexical this right it's the the this of the surrounding scope so this is I think the main difference between arrow functions and ordinary functions the more another difference that I can think of is that it's a, definitely a much more compact syntax so let's say that we have an array here of, of numbers and we want to multiply everything by two so with the ordinary function we would need to have something like this I'm just going to console.log array.map oh, sorry quite a few and then here we'll say function um, element return 
element times two, right? Um, if I save this, then back here at the console, I'm just gonna clear everything and run node error.js, then I get actually the numbers multiplied. Now, the other way of doing it is to use arrow functions, and this is simply much more concise because now I have simply the array.map element element times two, like so, right? So, oops. So this is definitely much easier to read and understand what is happening. The results are exactly the same. And yeah, that's one other possibility of applying arrow functions. That's it for today about functions. I hope I was able to give you a good understanding about the differences between the many types of functions. And in the next video, we will come back and talk about how to handle parameters and return values. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you will know as soon as the video is out. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.